So far, we've covered energy transfer through heat flow between a system and its surroundings. We also understand that exothermic means energy is given off and endothermic means energy is taken up. So the question is, how can we relate those concepts to a chemical reaction? All right, so let's say we have a neutralization reaction, sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, which is represented here in the speaker, right? So what we have is, we ha let's say we have 100 milliliters of a 0 0.1 molar solution, HCl solution, and we add 100 milliliters of a 0 0.1 molar solution of NaOH. So this is in a one-to-one -one relationship. It's going to be completely neutralized and uh, this reaction generates heat. And so the net ionic equation, if you remember, it is simply H plus plus OH goes to H2O. And so I have that represented here by three hydrogen ions reacting with three hydroxide ions to form three water molecules. And, uh, and if, you, if you look at the concentrations, we're talking about 200 milliliters of solution of which 95% of it is water. Okay, so the system really is the chemical reaction and the surroundings is the water, right? And and so if we can simply measure the heat that's absorbed, so this is an exothermic reaction, heat's going to be evolved here. If we can simply measure the heat that's evolved and relate that uh, to the energy taken up by the surroundings, we can relate that to the energy that's given off by the chemical reaction. And we can do that because we know the specific heat of water. We know exactly how much energy it takes to warm up one gram of water by one degree. And that concept is, is uh, the heat capacity. Okay, so the quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of a sample by one degree. And that differs from substance to substance. For water, it happens to be actually one calorie. And that's the definition of a calorie, the energy it takes to warm up one gram of water by one, one degree, which is then 4.18 joules. So we get a constant. We know that there are 4.18 joules per gram per degree, and that can be Celsius or Kelvin. Those are both the same increment. And, and so the mass of water relates to the milliliters of water here, right? So we have uh, one gram of water is also equal to one milliliter. So we know we have 200 milliliters of solution and we can just simply measure the uptick here in temperature, for example, but with that difference in temperature times the change in temperature times the mass, which in this case would be 200 grams. That would give us actually the energy or the change in energy for the reaction. And then based on the number of moles, we can relate that to what for per reaction or, or the molar heat capacity. So that's what we're really after here. So let's take a look at heat capacity. Again, that's the, the quantity, that's uh, the, the energy required to, to warm up one gram of a particular substance by one degree. Okay, and so for, for water, it happens to be uh, 4.18 joules. And uh, just a little side note here, I mean, it's, it's, and we'll get to that, how pressure and volume fall into it, uh, but, but we need to keep the pressure constant there so we don't do any, any work. All right, and then of course we want to relate that to the molar heat capacity, which I already mentioned in the previous slide. This is just uh, just a summary or a small little table looking at different kinds of substances that have have different heat capacities. Okay, so water, and and you can probably relate to that and, and that some of these metals it doesn't take a whole lot of energy to 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 heat them up, right? Think about think about going to to the lake and in the morning and and the sand is going to be cold if the sun isn't out yet but yet the water is still warm so the energy that was taken up by by the water by the lake uh, during the day before is still stored in there because it took a lot more energy to warm it up it's going to take a lot 
more time to cool it off, whereas if a half hour later, that sand is going to be burning hot on your feet because it just doesn't take a whole lot of energy to warm them up. So so, so metals and, and rocks and such things have pretty low heat capacities here, right? So 0 0.128 uh, joules per gram for lead. That's not nothing compared to water or other liquids like ethanol. And uh, here are some of the glasses and, like I said, sand is still very low, like five times uh, less compared to water. So that's just, uh, that's just what, uh, and so you have to pay attention and you have to be given uh, the specific heat of a substance that I'm, I'm talking to you about. However, for the most part for chemical reactions, they're going to be done aqueously and so we are going to mainly use the heat capacity of water. Okay, so here's the formula that I kind of threw out there already. All right, so you can calculate the quantity in joules of heat, which is abbreviated as Q, by multiplying the mass of your substance times the specific heat capacity, which is, depends on, it, on, on what you're using here. Right? So for water, it's 4.18 joules per gram per degree, which is the same as, as one calorie, because that's the conversion factor. One calorie is equal to 4.18 joules. And so, the, this in, the, so you always have to pay attention to the units times the change in temperature. Does it go up? Then we have, then if, if heat was taken up by the water, then that means so that has a positive value there. The surroundings took up heat, the, that meaning that's an endothermic process, which means your system had to have been exothermic, right? So the reaction and then vice versa, if you have a negative change in temperature of the surroundings, which is your, is your, is your water here or your solution, then uh, your reaction is, is endothermic, right? The system itself has to be endothermic. If that is taken away from the surrounding, energy is taken away from the surroundings into the bonds and you feel it cooling off. So that's basically the concept. So let's do a couple of calculations with using heat capacity. Calculate the heat absorbed. Absorbed means, means of course, then a positive value, an endothermic process, by 50 grams of water when its temperature is raised from 25 degrees to 80 degrees. So we're not even looking at a chemical reaction. We're just looking at the water, the system, not the system, the surroundings themselves. So clear, clear as, as it can be. So then Q is going to be equal to the mass, which is 50 grams, 50.0 grams of water times 4.18 joules per degree. And I don't write Kelvin or Celsius. They, they're interchangeable as long as I don't give you something in, in, uh, in Fahrenheit. You can just use that uh, per gram. So gram cancels. And now we're looking at the heat change. So we go from 80. 80 is the final temperature. And uh, 25 is the initial, so that's a, that's a difference in 55 degrees, okay? And so that's going to give us a positive value, 11,506 joules, which we have to report and uh, to two significant figures. And if we convert that to calories, we get, so you just have to divide that by 4.18, we get 28 kilo calories okay so you can double check that that's just heating so and, and it's important that you know that there's that this is a positive value so, so and if there was a a reaction that caused that increase in temperature of, of of your solution then that means the reaction that took place had to have been exothermic so that reaction then gets a negative value that's simply the heat exchange we've discussed in the previous lecture that's just uh, everything worked out nicely without paying any attention to significant figures, right? Just uh, I expect you to do that correctly, but I don't have to. Okay, so let's work another example. The temperature of a piece of aluminum changed from 20 to 273 degrees. So now we're not using the heat specific heat of water. We're going to have to use the specific heat of aluminum. And I provide that for you here, all right? So it goes from 20 degrees to 273 degrees. So it, it aluminum is going to have a positive Q. It's warmed up. 
and instead of giving you the the mass, I tell you how much energy you was stuck in, right? So, uh, so 2,756 joules of energy were required. So I have to use that formula and solve for mass, right? So mass is going to be equal to Q divided by delta T times CS, specific heat capacity. So we'll we put in the 2,756 joules and divided by the change in temperature, which is 273 degrees minus 20 degrees times the specific heat of aluminum, 0 0.901 joules per degree per gram. So that means the joules are going to cancel and the degrees are going to cancel and the mass is going to be in grams, so 121 grams. So we can figure out, we can solve for any of the variables, we can determine that 121 grams of aluminum were placed into, uh, well, were, were heated by 253 degrees, right? That's a positive, that's a positive change in energy and a positive change in temperature so all right okay so that was messed up but anyway you have the slides you can print them out and uh, let's work this problem I guess what is the final temperature of 500 grams of water if it absorbs 37,507 joules so so now we are we are solving for delta t right because we know we know it is uh we start out with 25 degrees and and we know it's it absorbed water absorbed energy so we're going to have to have an increase in temperature so we want to know the final temperature minus the initial temperature which is 25 degrees so you want to, in order to solve for that final temperature, you have to solve for delta T first, right? So the change in temperature. Delta T is going to be equal to Q over M, the mass times the specific heat of water here, right? We're talking about water. So we have 37,500 joules divided by the 500 grams. Let's say that's exactly 500 grams, not to mess up our sig fix and water is 4.18 joules per gram per degree so grams cancels joules cancels and we get 17.9 degrees Celsius so that's an increase in 17.9 degrees Celsius so in order to find out what the final temperature is we simply add that to 25 degrees Celsius plus 17.9 degrees Celsius is going to be 43 point or 43 degrees Celsius here, right? So it went to 40 degrees Celsius. If I change that question by simply putting released, that would mean that we have a negative delta T, right? And you would have to subtract that from 25, and that would be 7 degrees, right? So, so you got to pay attention to, to the wording here. Absorbs means Q is going to have a positive, and released, see, that would make that a negative value, right? Released versus absorbed, and that changes, that can change the entire question. Okay, so let's now look at, yeah, this is, this is just, a, again, solved. Moving on. Let's take a look at an energy transfer from one substance to another here, right? So, so it's not just the, how are we warming up the water? Well, we could be warming that up with, with, a, with a piece of metal, for example, that we heat up. And, and, and in fact, in a regular lab, that's, that's what we do. We, we warm up a piece of uh, metal and we dump it in. And so you have an exchange. You, you have the, the hot metal giving up energy, which is then taken up by by the water here, right? So here we have a metal block. In this case, it's 55 degrees. So it has a specific uh, heat capacity, and we don't know what metal it is, right? Uh, we are not told, but we're putting it into water at 25 degrees, 
right? So, so what's going to happen is this is going to come to some chemical equilibrium. But the bottom line is that the heat lost by the metal is equal to the heat gained of the water. And we can, we can use that. So we can take two separate calculations. And uh, we, if I gave you the mass of the metal and the mass of the water, and then the change in, we measure the change in temperature, we can actually solve for the specific heat of the metal and identify what metal it was, right? So if it was, if, was it was it iron or was it copper? If we we can just look that up at that point, right? And so that's that can be quite interesting or or useful. And so to put that in a more useful equation here, and uh, gained of course, heat lost equals heat gained by one, right? So the water is going to go up in temperature. The, the, the metal is going to go down, and so that means that the heat of the metal is equal to the negative heat of the water, right? So there has to be, so if that is, uh, that's going to be a negative change here, right? Because that's lost, it's going to be delta H, uh, well, the, the uh, delta E is going to be negative, and delta E is going to be positive, right? And so that's why that negative is there. Right, this is heat lost, which has a negative value. This is heat gained, which has a positive value. But since these two have to be equal, we use this formula here. Now let's let's use that in a real life example. Okay, so here we have an unknown amount of copper. Now we're going to have to solve for mass in this case, not specific heat. We're we're given the specific heat of of copper, and we are given we know the specific heat of water, right? So let's, let me read it first. An unknown amount of copper is heated to 652 degrees Celsius, then plunged into 100 milliliters of water at 24 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the water increases to 33.4. There should be a degree sign. So we know water's going to take up. We know the delta T, and they want, we want to know how the amount of copper, so the mass of copper. So let's just go through this table, right? So we know the specific heat. Let's write down everything we know. 0 0.38 joules per degree per gram. That we know. We also know the 4.18 joules per degree per gram. We don't know. This is our x. We don't know what the mass of, of the metal is. We do know what the mass of water is and, and I say 100.0 grams and that's that you should remember that that one gram of water is equal to one milliliter of water so the initial temperature of of the metal is 652 652 degrees it goes there's the thermal equilibrium here at 33.4, right? It gives up a lot of energy. Most of the energy is going to take, and that makes sense because it has a low specific heat. That means that the temperature change for the metal is going to be a lot larger than the temperature change for the water. And uh, we still don't know how much it is, but it goes from 552 to 30, oh, sorry, that needs to be down here, 33.4 degrees, right? Initial and final. And so the water starts at 24. It also ends up going to 33.4 degrees. So we have 24.0 degrees. That's your thermal equilibrium here. They, they both meet. So water absorbs energy and, and, uh, and the metal releases energy. So we put these two together. And we solve for mass, right? So you, you, and I don't have a whole lot of room here, but you, you're going to have this formula here. You basically have Q of the metal equals negative Q of water. And I'm just going give to you, give you the result here, right? So we're going to have the mass equal to 100 grams of water times 4.18 joules per degree per gram times 9.4, right? So that's the difference here, right? And so that's a plus 9.4, okay? So that's Q, and this gets a negative sign because the Q of the metal equals negative Q of, of the water. And so now we're dividing by the, the same thing for 0 0.38 joules per gram per degree times and so the change in temperature here is of course negative 
650, sorry, it's 618 degrees Celsius, right? And if you solve that, you get 16.7 grams, right? Okay, so let me just go back to that, looking for a little bit more space. But you know you can calculate key Q with with your with the regular equation here, like mass times CS times delta T, right? So you're essentially just doing this equals negative mass times CS times delta T. Sorry about that, right? Where where this is for water and this is for the metal. In case you missed that, that's all I am doing here with this problem. I'm writing it all down. Okay, so here is everything solved and worked out. And so a similar example is in your book on page 376. And uh, when I come back, we are going to look at pressure volume work and start getting closer to, to what is called enthalpy.